Hi everybody, this is Rose of Sharon and I'm back again with another book review. This is the second book in the Johnny Dixon mystery series. It's called The Mummy, The Will, and The Crypt. And it's rather frightening. Like any like any other Belarus book dealing with the supernatural. He's looking for the lost will of Mr. H. Bagwell Glamis. He's a man of great fortune and sinister witchcraft. Of course, you see how Belarus throws in the the element of the supernatural right right away, and and this is actually more on the element of um, <clears throat> necromancy, which is something I think that Mr. Belarus was rightly obsessed with. Mr. Glamis' widow, she's offering a reward to anybody who finds it, enough to help Johnny's grandmother, and Johnny's grandmother isn't doing very well. Of course, um, Professor Childermass is always telling him, Johnny, just put that out of your mind. You have more important things to consider yourself with, like with softball and <laughs> your schooling and, and all that, you know, the, the typical um, guardian role in trying to lead a child down the right narrow path <laughs> toward upright citizenship and this one is really excellent I, I really enjoyed the first uh, the blue figurine which was more about Egyptian um, mythology this one feels a lot more like a house the house with a clock on its walls just because of um, all the different puzzle pieces that fit so well together and Belarus has such a, a deft way and <laughs> even though a lot of things are left to your imagination you're still given that sense of dread and the unknown the uncertainty and the suspense and of course it ends on a happy note but it also ends up in the air for Johnny and his family and you know, you wouldn't think that a book dealing with horror would have a happy ending, but um, the book series itself, and I'm, I think I'm actually looking at it right now. I'm going to count and see how many more books there are, because I'm going to be doing a review of the whole series. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I think it's nine. Yeah, there are nine because in... Um, Lewis Barnevelt, there are 13. I only have, I've done the first three books of the series, and there's a fourth book that I recently got. The, the Ghost in the Mirror is the fourth one, I do believe, if I'm correct. If I'm incorrect, please correct me. And then, of course, um, Anthony Monday, or I call him Tony. Tony's series is just four very short books, and the books themselves are also written in such a way that they're easily digestible. And I wouldn't recommend this for very young children because it's uh, sort of like, I'm going to equate it to this. If, uh, if you grew up, and you, you'll probably understand what I mean, but growing up, um, and this never frightened me for some strange reason, but in um, the second movie of uh, the um, the never ending story movie it uh it really frightened me because they had they had some villains that were involved in our creatures not not villains but creatures that were involved in part 2 of the film itself that really scared me i, I mean the design they were just absolutely horrifying and <laughs> And uh, another one I can say is similar to that would be, you, if you know what I'm talking about, you know where I'm going, the Wheelers in Return to Oz. Yeah, you know of what I speak. This is not the Oz that we have come to know and love. Oh, no. No, this is what um, the author actually intended with a lot of the darker elements of the fantasy itself. And... They did such a, a good job, but even though the movie, it unnerved me a little bit, it wasn't to the point where I was outright um, 
scared because when I was young, and I have a story about this, um, I still wouldn't watch a slasher if, if somebody put a big sack of money just on my bureau and, and said, hey, I've got a challenge for you. Watch this, watch this horror film. And I would probably wouldn't be able to sleep for weeks, but yeah, I don't, I don't like slashers, but when I was young, I had the chance to, to ride the, um, the haunted, in the Haunted Mansion, uh, amusement ride. And it was the first time I'd actually been exposed to an amusement park ride. So it was after I rode Dumbo and, and Dumbo was fun. Dumbo was exciting. Um, it, it wasn't, um scary at all I was just I had fun um Haunted Mansion isn't scary at all I mean to me and that's it's very very tame um I really liked it I love um the special effects and animatronics and it just because they're unbelievable they're just sensational but getting back to my aforementioned topic I I just don't feel that the age group below seven should be even picking this book up or the series itself because even as an adult reading the series I I still felt my skin prickling quite a bit and I mean for a children's book series to do that to you and um Harry Potter did that to me as well with the Dementors I mean just maybe maybe very <laughs> uncomfortable but for good reason that's why Miss Rowling, I should say Mrs. Rowling, did that to, to prove a point. Um, Belarus does the same thing with his villains. And his villains are written in such a way that, yes, indeed, they are a threat. But you know, despite the fact that in this case, John gets himself into quite the jam, he's able to get himself out of it. Through, it's like a miracle. <laughs> it's such a deus ex machina that you think, whoa, I did not see that coming, but um, I really don't have that much else to say about book two other than it's absolutely sensational. And characters are very relatable. And in this case, you really, you side with Johnny <laughs> despite his flaws and Knowing, I, I mean, you would do anything for your family, too, and that's what he's trying to do with his grandmother. And his grandmother's very sick. <laughs> but it's just very, very extremely well written. And, of course, there's only one illustration in it. It's the map. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's so a part in that which just made me freeze in my tracks when I read it. I thought, ah, because <laughs> I could see it in my mind's eye, and it just it chilled me to the bone. I thought, I'm surprised that you had this in a children's book, but it seems like this was a trend. I mean, Belarus probably set the tone for using um, death, morbidity, that kind of thing. The the whole idea of um, just death looming in um, the foreground, just lurking there. <laughs> and you know, something bad is going to happen. Needless to say, it's still one of those books you pick up, you can't stop reading. It's that well written. But um, that's all I got to say. So until next time, I've been Prosper. Ciao, tutti.